Good morning. Welcome to the Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City's uh, morning docket. Today's Thursday, November 1st, 11 a.m. If your case is going to be called, I would ask that you step up to the microphone, state your name clearly into the microphone. If you're going to be providing testimony, please be prepared to be sworn in. If you have an electronic device, I would ask that you silence it or place it on vibrate now. Mr. Chair, may I start with a number of preliminary matters? You may. Uh, the following matters have been postponed and will be set on a future date. Case number one, Brian Grace and Paul Dunshaw, Fireball Entertainment Incorporated, trading as the Big Easy Cabaret, 2000 Eastern Avenue. That matter has been postponed. Andrew Dunlap and Michael White, the Sobo Taco Spot, LLC, trading as Banditos, 1118 South Charles Street, Unit 101. That matter has been postponed. That matter and the prior matter were remands, uh, and they'll be postponed for a future date. Regular items that have been postponed this morning, Ro uh, Rosa Fiera and Silvia Garcia Oliva Incorporated, trading as Los Amigos Restaurant, 5506 Hartford Road. That matter is postponed. Donald Higdon, Anthony Scardinia Jr., and Anthony Scardinia III, Higgies LLC, trading as Higgies, 118 Cleveland Street. That matter has been postponed as well. Calling the regular items on the docket. First matter is Yenis Silva and Thomas Hamrick, Carolina Tex-Mex LLC, trading as Carolina Tex-Mex Restaurant, 500 South Wolf Street. Good morning, Chairman and members of the board. Harry Previs on behalf of the petitioners. Good morning. Would the folks yeah. to your right raise their right hands, please? If anybody who's going to testify in this matter, please come up and raise your right hand. We're, we're actually asking for a postponement. Well, let me swear them first, okay? All right, raise your right hands, please. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay, thank you. You may lower your hands. Mr. Priebus? Yeah, we're asking for a postponement because we learned of some um, some opposition from the um, community associations in Fells Point. And are you going to meet with them or something? We're, we're going to meet with them and w specifically with uh, Fells Prospect and enter into an MOU. Is that who you all represent, I Fells Prospect? No, um, this is for the you got to come up to the microphone, ma'am, please. What is your name, please? Um, my name is Deborah Tempera. Um, I do belong to a few associations. Well, I did, unofficially. But I'm aware of the different associations. I'm also aware that this has been a month, and the opposition has, is just not currently known if there is opposition on all of them or conditions on all of them. Are you here in opposition? Um, I am. Oh, OK. So I hadn't seen the opposition. That's why. Uh, because I. I'm in person. I, should I have? I no, no, I hadn't seen the oh, one okay. that was indicated <laughs> in our records. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know, and I was out of town. I just got back on Tuesday are night. Are you all no. together? No. Well, no. Okay. well, we are individuals. Okay, we were the. Some, uh, I'm sorry. You need, they have to be identified. We're on the record, though, so we have to have everybody's name. And oh, uh, did I say my name? You did, yes, but I, I need did. this gentleman's. Okay. Uh, my name is Andrew Dowell. Uh -huh. um, I. D is in David, O-W-E-L-L. -L. I am the uh, owner of the Lily and Zeiler Funeral Home, which is located directly across the street from, from the proposed. Okay, transfer. and you, sir? My name is Joshua Parker. I'm the owner of 509 South Wolf Street. You're a right? resident or? Yes, okay, so, uh, so you're like, um, very close by. Yes. Okay. And, a and so all three of you have come to voice opposition to the transfer? Yes. Okay. And um, the actual written opposition we had was from – so we've got a number of letters apparently. Okay. Um, so there's an email from uh, Robert Taylor. 513 Wolf Street appears to be in opposition. There's a support letter from Zeke Cohen. I don't think it's a support. It's opposition. opposition. I'm writing you in support. Oh, and he's in support of opposition. Somebody should learn to write his letters for him. Um, <laughs> the, um, 
So, so these are all oppositions. Is that what they are? And are you familiar with these, Mr. Priebus? I haven't gotten a look at them. I, I knew that Upper Fells would was in opposition after meeting with them, and I wasn't sure about uh, Fells' prospect. Um, from what I heard from Ms. Russell this morning, they wanted to enter an, uh, enter into an MOU. Um, and we're willing to do that. We're willing to enter in, into an MOU with well, It sounds anyone. like you're going to have to get together with a lot more than just her because <coughs> there's significant opposition. Okay, is there a way? For, are you going to handle this matter, or is um, the other Mr. Priebus going to handle this matter? I've been handling it so far, um, but he's involved as well. Well, um, can you all get contact information with all of these people and include them in your discussions so that if this matter comes back before the board, everybody's had an opportunity to participate? Of course. Yeah. Um, can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm a little concerned because it sounds like this is, yes, it's okay if we do an MOU. Um, well, if everyone were to agree, I think that might be the case, but if there are people who won't agree, then... Yeah. I think there was proposals at all these meetings. That's why I feel this is a waste of time. They asked for one, and that was to never go before. And Mr. Um, Andrew also, even yesterday, asked, would you be willing never to ask for live entertainment? And the answer up to as of last night was no, which is one of the big issues. My issue is a totally, I mean, all this, but is there's this, excuse also- Excuse me for one second. Okay. I don't, is this a live entertainment request? No, it's no. not. No, there's but, it, it, but it needs to be clarified. It's on the application. It but needs it, to be that's stricken. That's not in front of us, though. Oh. They're not asking for live entertainment. No, but on the application, it's asking for it. The only thing you have saying not asking for it is a letter from the lawyer. That's not quite the same. I, I just don't feel comfortable with it even being on the application. Well, I'm just telling you we're not granting live entertainment on the basis of this application. Well, because they have to go to the zoning here. I understand that. And that means us to go back to zoning and we play this ball catch 22 thing because you have to go back to zoning. It's a well, C1. No, we understand. So I don't understand your live entertainment objection at this stage. It's not, I'm not here for live okay, entertainment. So I'm here for the up. transfer in general of this particular liquor so license. So we're now contemplating whether to postpone the matter. Right. What the and chairman is suggesting is that all the parties, Mr. Priebus, work with all the parties to reach some kind of an agreement. If one is not, a, if there is not an agreement, it can still come in front of this commission to make decisions. I just say we've done this twice and last year as well. I'm, you know, it's get, you keep going and going and going. Um, so that, I just was wondering if that could, if, so we cannot go forward is what we're saying. Is that true? Well, they're not prepared to go forward. If so, you want and to. Because they if, put the application. If you want to put something on the record today so that you don't have to come back, we'd be willing to have you do that. Um. I, I, I would like to do that. Well, go ahead. And then I would all, but I will be able to come back again if, if I want to, though, right? Or is this you my can, one-time presentation? I thought you okay. just told all me right. you didn't okay, want I, to. I will do that. All <laughs> so right. let's get our ducks in a row. Are you coming back or not? I might not be here, so okay. I'll put my, I would like to do this now, then. Am okay. I allowed to yes. put it on the record now? Yes. But now, Mr. Priebus can still cross-examine you. Yes. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, looking through the application, um, I noticed that it was written that the board would look at various points, the public need and desire for the license. Um, I particularly feel that in this massive location that the, which includes all of this, the rear of the building, all downstairs, this building is also under the same address, but at this point it's not recognized technically. Sometimes it's recognized as storage room because there is access to it, but sometimes it's not recognized. So the questions are having, did this ever go before the plans of them ever been presented to the fire marshal um, to go over the plans for this building? Um, because if you look at the history of this particular building, it, it's, for me, I, I restorate buildings. Um, I'm well aware, I've also very close to this put in a very big restoration project and I'm a corner property. Cornerstones of a pr area are very, very important. And the zoning laws, when they changed it, it kind of, you know, it's all on question. It's a brand new zoning law. Is it good or not? Is it really the best thing for a neighborhood? 
no one really looks, and if I went to those association meetings and probably presented what I'm gonna to present to you now, I think some of the comments would have been a little bit different. So you're looking at all this. Right now it is currently um, a little cafe which they call restaurant, and then it's the grocery store. This door access will be for the second floor. There is another doorway in the rear that they can get out and the rear door. So they passed all that. A fire inspector will go in and he'll go, you have your fire extinguishers in the right place, that's it. But does he know the really big picture of what they're presenting here? They're presenting a dance floor. They're presenting both floors now. Um, it, it, it just changes. This building, if you look at the history of the permits, Never, ever, during the phases of the consolidation of this building since 2003, has been, in my word, legally constructed. Um, here it is. Back in 2003, interior alterations, and this is when all the consolidations- Can I stop you for a quick second? Excuse so, me? so far, you've talked about- Construction. A, what the fire marshal approved, and okay. we have, as you know, no authority over the fire marshal. Mm -hmm and be over construction and you know we're a liquor board so I guess my point is concerns? because it's here if you're granting another position of things that not look a liquor license with a lot of people in a dance floor you are liable because you're you're chain it gives a different usage and structurally wise it's a big impact so one of your questions was so you think that there's to, yeah. to interrupt real quickly you think that there's going to be a dance floor in there because it's in your plans. Well, if they don't have a live entertainment. The board's talking. Can you please not talk over them? Thank you. It's my understanding that they're not looking to get a live entertainment. I dance without a uh, DJ and a karaoke and things. I dance when music is on a stereo system. Um, I dance when I see YouTube's on a TV screen. Um, I dance. And I think that's a good aspect. I think we do need dance areas. However, is this the location? This location, if you look at the rest of the homes and everybody, and the size of this place, this is the side of the building, which used to be two residential buildings, um, this one and this one. And then it got consolidated with all this. So here you start all these federal buildings and a tree-lined street and the impact. This is across the street. This is Josh's um, house here, and this is everybody else down here. And we have commercial buildings, but their impact is not with a liquor license, actually. There's a little bar around the corner. Um, this is supposed to be actually the address of the property, 500. This is 500 South Wolf Street is Eastern Avenue, but they chose to consolidate the 500 Wolf Street. And it, it's not these people, it's not personal, it's just the history of the property owners of this building. Did you, did, uh, ma did I know you, it has nothing to do no, with it. No, 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 I'm oh. just trying to understand, because I'm trying to understand your argument, um, and I do take note that, there, that the plans do show a karaoke stand. Now, I don't know if those that would be deemed live entertainment, I'm not suggesting that's being applied for, I understand. But Ms. Kempore, did you have the opportunity to take your issues before in the past, assuming it was timely, to the zoning board? Yeah, well, we did, and when we showed up with opposition, they never reapplied, it was canceled that day, and they never went again before the zoning board. But, but, but you understand that, that we have no authority uh, to issue a live entertainment until they go through that process. No, I, but it's not all about live entertainment. It's still about drinking. It's about noise. It's about congestion in a building that is so big. It's about possibly never, there, there is no financial investment of these people in this building. The building has rotted window sills to date. I just looked at it again today. When you have a- with the city permit, permitting folks issue a per, well, they, they didn't apply for one. When you're grandfathered in, yes, I know. Don't they have to apply for a permit, or don't they have to be issued permits after, at some point, before they get the liquor license? Apparently not. I, I, Mr. Akris, can you please clarify that? Because they received their use and occupancy permit. Yeah. That's the last stage. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Commissioner, would you like me to go up or just no, that, speak I, with you? That's fine there. But, you know, if the, uh, once the applicant makes application to the housing department, uh, for use and occupancy permit allowing for restaurant use, including sales of alcoholic beverages, mm -hmm. we will not 
issue a license until we get verification through that use and occupancy permit from housing before we issue the license. But they were uh, permit, they have their use and occupancy permit. But that's, that's not something we could try to encourage you to go to either the housing or the health department. We don't have that authority. No, I understand. I'm just trying to, yeah. I'm trying to respond to your, your no. points and I'm trying to focus us on the ones that we have some control over okay. so we can understand them. That's all, ma'am. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I better go back to those questions that you had here because I'll get all. Confused because it, it, it says that they, their use permit is to operate as a restaurant. Their drawings and what they presented to the associations and to us has not been so. It's been restaurant plus. There's always the plus. Um, plus includes this dance floor and karaoke stand. And so. pool table and uh, 2, uh, 2 a.m. Restaurants usually close by 11 o'clock in the evening because um, there was a survey about that when we went up against another place of the Handlebar Cafe. Um, and we documented, and if I have to find all those documents, of the average restaurant in Inner Harbor East and every place else, they usually close down by 11 o'clock. But then there's a stipulation, and specifically this type of license doesn't grandfather it in. And Pete Previs actually, I'm sorry, but he knows how to the words of the law, and it is about the law to get it that it's more broader. Um, so the size of this in this area definitely would have an impact. Um, the building is not even secure. I, I would think that even for a liquor board, to, for a transfer, financials you would look at a little bit, whether they can sustain that or whether they're going to sell it as soon as they get it in there. This is a very large establishment to do that. Tomorrow they could sell the license once you transfer it. If And how can anybody oppose that, too? Okay, come back before us. I, I, I Yes, but I know that yeah, process, too. Might some red flags if they're <laughs> serving as some kind of a... Well, the ba building's under bankruptcy. It hasn't paid taxes for a couple years now. And that has nothing to do with the current people. But you have a building that's been foreclosed every three years, and new owners keep popping up. Um, I, I find it funny that a bankruptcy building and bankruptcy and not paying taxes can even sign a lease or they'd feel comfortable with that unless there's some type of relationship here. Um, it's just a privilege to have a liquor license. It's a privilege even to have an occupancy permit. It's a privilege to have all your permits signed off. With that said, in the zoning even, it's a privilege. We keep extending privileges before all departments get together and really analyze the stories here. Um, I just been living here my whole life. I, I just know how this these things go. Um, it's just this building. I know this building. It used to be a an office building, and then when here's my history too. When it was a restaurant with um, a, bar, a bar upstairs, they had uh, alcohol. The music was so loud, they were always sighted. The neighbors, because these are single pane windows, there's no insulation in the walls. There was a fire and it was shut down and their liquor license was taken away. If you talk to the people in this neighborhood who are not here because everybody's so worn out from last year being thrown into zoning, they'll tell you that the impact and the noise level out of this building without any reconstruction is terrible and you know people standing out and that all has to do unfortunately not with serving their current it would be with the liquor license that this would encourage all this stuff um, so mr previous can i ask a quick question mm -hmm. of course councilman cohen's email suggests that that council for the license or the prospective licensee or the current licensee because transferring location that you guys had rejected uh, the request to uh, remove live entertainment. It, is that true? No, it's not true. Okay. I just want to make sure we get the record straight. Last true. year we took live entertainment off the application. Despite the plan still showing that there's some live entertainment there. Well, his, and Mr. Mr. Previs's letter says it's not. It's on the application. I just want to correct the, some of these we letters. We have an updated um, floor plan. I don't know okay. if we have it with us today, but we'll definitely bring it with us to uh, We showed it to, to the neighborhood associations when we met with them, and it didn't include any kind of um, live entertainment in the in the floor plan and last year around September when we first put in we heard from the uh, community associations and they said they were against the live entertainment and we took it off the application because of that 
Okay, I want to finish with. Did However, you have the, the, all those further? conversations Sorry. were just regarding the zoning. We weren't talking about the transfer of the liquor license at those, that particular time because that wasn't what was before us. So I want to make that specified because there was two separate issues, a transfer and a zoning hearing. We were first going to zoning, so you do zoning. So now we are liquor. Um, also, the applicants, I looked through the history, and it seems like, and a lot of people do this, they break the law until they're caught. They had done entertainment at their last place, and it was until not that they got caught that, and, and you know, it, it was minor. I'm not saying, I don't know, I was never in there. But until that occurred, then they went to, and applied for an entertainment license before the board. Um, licensing as well, you know, there's times where they didn't have their licensing up to date until someone came in, they were caught. So that tells me a little bit about you know, how is this place going to be ran? Um, you know, and then there's no big financial investment. So besides the structure, the safety of it, uh, there's also the question of occupancy. I'm not sure does the liquor board acquire how many occupants? No, they don't for a transfer. You don't need to know how many people would be in an establishment. No. Um, seldom comes up. Any other than owners? Yeah, well, it's an awfully big place. Um, Latin Palace is shut down. I, I'm foreseeing a little bit of this occurring. Is it just the right location for this with all these unknowns? Structurally, zoning. Well, zoning is, a, is, is, is okay for zoning to see one. Well, for the restaurant parts, per se. Um, I guess that's all I have to say. <laughs> okay. Did you have any questions for this lady? No. Okay, thank you. Gentlemen, do you want to say anything today? You want to come back when we hear it? If I may, um, I have not submitted a letter of opposition. I was going to do that today, and if, if I could, I would like to hold off from submitting that. Um, but I would like to be party to the conversation uh, yeah. with regards to the MOU. Yeah. So I don't know how. Yeah, can I can give. I would also like to be party of. So, the if you will all give Mr. Priebus your contact information, I'm sure he's going to want to uh, bring everybody together before we come back in here, so he can find out what the opposition is. Can Can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Okay. This has been for me um, uh, going on for well over a year, so it's been extremely stressful. Uh, you know, I operate the funeral home across the street from the proposed site. Um, is there any way that I could at least maybe present my case so that I can be done with this and kind of let however I thought the, you just said process. you wanted to submit. Uh, do you want to do that now or do you want to submit something? I, I didn't understand. Well, with another postponement, it's just more time, it's more stress, it's more, you know, balls in the air. Uh, you know, I'm trying to focus on my operating my business. Okay. If you want to put something on the record now, that's fine. I mean, I can go through my whole kind of process, I guess, or, or at least the issues that I see present. That's or, fine. Or yep. That's okay? Yes, yeah. that's fine. That's what this lady just did. Okay. Well, I don't. Mine might be a little more. I mean, I can go through everything that I would if 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 the hearing were held tomorrow. I could present the day. Yes. Is yes. that a possibility? Yes. yes. Please. Okay. Um, I do want to preface that I'm not an attorney, even though I may. I, I feel like an elementary one, having to try and research alcoholic beverage code and Baltimore City Liquor Board code. Um, so. It, it would just be better for me if I could try and present now. Um, on the the application, uh, or one of the documents of the application, it, it mentions this uh, four by four, the, the 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 map that shows all the current license liquor licenses. Being in the area. In the area, mm -hmm. yes. And I think on that that document, it has eleven licenses. And as I draw. Uh, or drive through the neighborhood, if I could put on record, there was uh, the Happy Hour Heaven, a license, Port City Tavern, uh, Bristol's Wine and Spirit. And if I look at the map, 
or as I've written the map, and I don't know if somebody else can come back and maybe review what I'm saying, it, the line would carry to the east side of Broadway if a two block radius on each side of the proposed site, as I see it, carries over to the east side of Broadway, which then would enter into like the Ritz Cabaret, the uh, I think Broadway Liquors. I, I'm just trying to accentuate the number of existing licenses. Well, how many more did you identify than the 11? Uh, those three and, and possibly those other two. So five more? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, am I permitted to ask questions of of the well, well, why don't applicants? You tell us, uh, we can ask them <laughs> for oh. you, but okay. why don't you tell us okay. what you want to say, and then we'll go through those. Um, well, on the application, uh, it states that uh, uh, Mr. Hamrick it lives, resides at 2535 Fate Avenue, and with my limited computer research um, it's when I pulled the tax records for that property it, it states that it is not his primary residence so I was trying to figure out if that's the case or or not you, so where does it, where does this gentleman live <coughs> I'm Thomas Hamrick I've lived there for 24 years and this is definitely my primary residence Okay. Do you own any other residences? No. No. Do you have that specific I do have it. I mean, you may, for your own benefit, try to get the homesteaders tax credit. I mean, it's not. Do you own or rent, Mr. Hammer? Oh. I mean, there's copies there. Okay. We'll receive them. Um, so I'm trying to, uh, again, with regards to the application, um, trying to ascertain what the uh, what Mr. Hamrick's uh, what his involvement might be in the, in the Carolina Tex-Mex restaurant if he has any form of ownership um, you know does he work for the for the restaurant uh, uh, those um, type of questions our records there. indicate he does not have a financial interest Okay. Um, uh, Mike, the as I understand it, the occupancy of the old address, 505 South Broadway, uh, where Carolina Tex-Mex uh, once operated, uh, was listed at 85. And as Mr. Previs presented to the community associations, two of which I was present for. Uh, the occupancy number that was thrown out was 100 for the second floor and 70 for the first floor. So I just wanted to, again, make note of the, the number. When you say occupants, you're talking about the number of customers that can be in the place at a given time? Uh, uh, that's, uh, I'm assuming, if that's, yes. I, I don't, is that what you mean? The question again, I'm sorry. It, are you talking about the number of customers who would, could I, be? I'm just trying to establish the, the, the possible occupancy of the two buildings. What one was When you say occupant, I think of someone who lives there. Are you oh. talking about that uh, or are you well, talking about uh, Whatever customers? numbers that uh, Mr. Previous had presented to the community aso associations in terms of, I guess, how they look at the. I think, you're sir, I think he's right. referring, Mr. Chairman, to, to the fire capacity. Uh, no, fire I capacity. thought you were, okay. but I okay. it was very unclear. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so Mr. Tell me your name again, sir. Uh, Andrew Dowell. I'm not going to stop you from challenging the technical parts of the application, but you said you run this funeral home business across the street, so I assume that you have some large objections to this. Can I we do. get to those? And <laughs> well, um, my objections to this is, and I can, if I can, maybe just then read my opposition letter to the board you have copies we can also I do
hopefully they'll give you my copy. Okay, well, this will be made part of the record, and then we'll make sure that Mr. Priebus gets a copy. Mr. Dell, this was also oh, attached. Okay. There you go. I would probably maybe enter those as well. Okay. So maybe just to kind of give a little bit of back history if I can. A year ago, the, the application was made for the live entertainment. I know we're not here to discuss it. I just kind of want to give you a little background of, of what was presented. And not having any um, history in, or involvement with this process, um, I attended the Fells Point Community Organization hearing where the Silvas presented. And it was thrown out to me, as we, or uh, it was mentioned this morning, an MOU. And having dealt with uh, a restaurant in that same location s serving liquor and the issues that it presented to our business, w which appears in le the letter, um, you know, when I look at this, or because I've had so much time to kind of review this and go over this in my mind, you know, I felt that I was being um, uh, trying to find the word. Um, that I wasn't, I was taking my concerns as a funeral home operator versus maybe the concerns of the community. And in in my view, or uh, with regards to the funeral home, I, I, I think, as you can read in my letter, the many issues that it would present to us. And the idea of an MOU, uh, which would not change my opposition, but for the benefit of the community, it might at least uh, help them in terms of whatever decisions could be made, whether it's hours of operation or what have you. So I, I'm trying to take in both sides of this issue, um, but again, I don't want it to lessen what I feel uh, would be inappropriate for the location and for the business we run. We've been in that location for 110 years. Um, I'm fourth generation there. Uh, we, spent a, we spent a lot of time and money purchasing property and trying to make our facility uh, available uh, to the community. <coughs> and the reason I brought up the number of liquor licenses because it, it mentions uh, in your alcoholic beverages thing the, the uniqueness <coughs> the uniqueness of what what this transfer would bring and my concern is to and whether or not the board would would consider this our uniqueness we are the only funeral home only family owned funeral home from the inner harbor to Highland Town. It's the only place for the community to come and to to mourn and to to do what it is to do, or at least for our business. And as it kind of states in the, the letter, you know, it's just unconscionable to me that they would be subjected to either the potential issues presented for this transfer or be forced out of their community to find a location that might be quieter or more suitable. Um, you know, so that's, in a nutshell, I guess, my... Okay. Well, my thank you. Um, did you, Mr. Previous, did you have any questions um, for Mr. Dow? Yeah, I just have a couple. Um, Mr. Dow, did you meet with the Silvas last night? I did, yes. And before that, how many times had we previously talked to you or made a presentation? 
Um, I, I, I had, it, I had, I, I have not spoken to the Silvas prior to last night. Um, when they, when they went before the community organizations uh, with regards to the live entertainment a year or so ago, um, you know, I, I was presented that day with the information that that this is something that they're proposing for this site. So, it enraged me. I went to the hearing and voiced my concerns, and then uh, followed again uh, this year uh, with the two uh, community associations that I also attended. It was strongly uh, expressed to me this idea of an MOU. And again, not having um, any knowledge of how this whole process works, I did communicate to Joanne Massapust, who runs the Fells Point Community Organization, to say, and this was, you know, maybe within the last week, what are the possibilities of an MOU? Um, you know, she, her reply was, well, we've already had our, our, our association meeting. We've already opposed the transfer. So, you know, your options are A, B, and C. So I thought it important to reach out to the Silvas and have a conversation with them. Um, you know, I, this is not meant, this is not a personal matter, and I wanted to express that personal in terms of them as people. I'm not, you know, I'm not opposing this on, f because of them specific, I'm, I'm, I'm opposing it because the idea of, of a restaurant with liquor being served across from our funeral home. So it was uh, suggested that I sit and talk, and they were very kind. Um, they took the time. They showed uh, <coughs> myself and, and Josh Parker here the facility. So we did have some good conversation. Um, did you ever come to a resolution in your conversation last night? No, we never. I, it, in my mind, no. We didn't come to any uh, resolution. It was more of these are our ideas. Um, this is our, our place, uh, you know, come look at it. And, you know, I was, uh, I was very impressed by them. Um, you know, our funeral home has, uh, or is working with a larger Latino contingency. Um, and by having that interaction, um, I can see how hardworking, uh, how hardworking uh, the Latino community is. Do you have any other so questions? Do you have any other um, problems with their with their restaurant going in there, other than just the alcohol, or is it um, just, does it just boil down to the alcohol? Well, for me, it's, it, 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 you know, initially it was a live entertainment and, and it is the alcohol. Alcohol um, present for a, uh, I forget, not the occupancy or, or whatever the proper term is here. Um, it, to me, yes, it, it's a bad mix between families who are mourning and uh, in the building right next door, we're 60 feet away. Um, and the number of potential customers that could be in that restaurant with alcohol. Now, I know, you know, uh, Pedro, Mr. Silva here, you know, he expressed how he liked to handle situations like that. Um, so you're saying you just have a problem with the business going in altogether and that no resolution with you can ever... I don't believe so. I w you know, I've, I've, I've gone back and forth with this. I, you know, unless there were some... Uh, I just can't see the the possibility, not for me personally or for our funeral home, you know, as I speak for the funeral home. My only... Uh, and, and the Silvas reached out to you to try to come to an understanding, is that correct? I, I, I wouldn't say they reached out to try to find an understanding, no. I think I, I, I reached out to them. They were very uh, cordial in meeting. Um, and we just kind of, 
really had that opportunity, which we didn't have, to to really meet each other, I guess, you know, because again, it's always been confrontational at these hearings because of what they were presenting and, and how, I, how my funeral home uh, would feel with regards to, to the issues that we feel are gonna be present should liquor and or the possibility at some point of live entertainment somehow finding its way there. Okay, no further. Okay, thank you. And sir, your name again, can you come up? My name is Joshua Parker. Mr. Parker, did you want to add anything? Or no. do you want to come back? You I'll tell come us. Back. Okay. All right. Um, so, Mr. Previs, if you will uh, get contact information from these people as well as the others, do you have copies of all the opposition letters? I do not. We'll get, we'll get you that so you can contact them. Uh, after you've had your various meetings with uh, the people who are opposing this, whether you reach resolution or not, let the board know and we'll set the matter back in so that we can make a determination on it. Okay, thank you. Uh, the chair, she would, I think, like to introduce oh, those. That's fine. Uh, tell me your name again one more time, ma'am. Um, Deborah Tempera. Tempera? Yep, T-E-M-P-E-R-A. Okay, so we'll make these temporary exhibits, um, Stacy, and uh, Mr. Dowell's exhibit and then the oppositions, okay? Thank everyone, and uh, you're welcome back when it gets set back in, but if you choose not to, we will have the record of what was uh, placed here today by Ms. Tempera and Mr. Dow, okay? Thank you. Thank you. I'd call exhibits for the record. Board exhibit one, email in opposition from Joanne Masipus. Exhibit number two, letter of opposition from Councilman Zeke Cohen. Number three, letter of opposition from Fells Point Community <coughs> Organization. Number four, letter of opposition from the Upper Fells Point Improvement Association. Exhibit number five, three emails of opposition. Exhibit number six, three letters of opposition. Exhibits of opposition, number one, Text records for applicant Mr. Thomas Hamrick. Number two, letter of opposition from Mr. Andrew Dow, dated 11 1 2018. And number three, six photos. Okay. Mr. Akras. On the next matter on the docket. Do we have another matter? Yes. Yep. The hardship request. Rachel Hoyle, do you see that? Uh, well, I do see it, so I'm sorry. Ready, Bryson? Yes. Calling Rachel Hoyle and Ruth Miller, Brothers Place Incorporated, trading as Martini's Bar, 1846 through 50 West Pratt Street. This is a class BD7, beer, wine, and liquor license a request for a hardship extension under the provisions of the Alcoholic Beverages Article 12-2202. Gentlemen, would you raise your right hands, please? Um, you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Uh, is one of you Marvin Miller? Yes. Oh, okay. Marvin Pardon? Do you want to sit down? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, Mr. Miller, you've written a letter to the board requesting a hardship extension. Um, can you tell us what's going on with the license? Well, we closed in June. This year has been a very bad year. Uh, in January 4th, I was in the hospital, had a pacemaker. I had a heart attack and a pacemaker put in. Um, thereafter, I was supposed to have surgery on my knees, and uh, I ended up, I've lost a sight in my eye. And now um, I was running the place. Miss Hoyle. Is Ruth Miller your My spouse? wife. Okay. And um, she, until a few years ago, she's 80 years old. She can't do anything down there anymore. And Miss Hoyle had a stroke three years ago, and she can't walk. So everything is, I'm so to speak, and have been running the whole show. So are you going to try to sell the license? Yes. Okay. Have you made any effort towards that? Well, the problem has been that um, 
when I lost the sight, um, I was unable to do anything there. And then I can't be out. I've had seven heart attacks. And I can't be out in warm weather. I can't breathe. Um, so this summer has kind of, you know, everything has been put off. And then I started with my right eye, losing the sight in my right eye. And I'm under treatment with that now. I had what they call a stroke in my left eye. And um, where the blood doesn't get oxygen. Do you have anyone who can help you? No. Okay. And who are you, sir? I'm Dave Garza. I'm with the Baltimore Development Corporation, and uh, I've known uh, Mr. Miller for 20 years. I've worked in that territory. And by the way, it's VRI. Uh, I understand. I'm technical assistance. C is there any way your organization can help him to uh, dispose of this license? Uh, I've, I've been helping, yes. Uh, it's not the sort of thing that we, we do, but uh, I, I've known Mr. Miller for a long time. I've worked with uh, staff on the liquor board where it's kind of how we got here today. Uh, anything we can do. Uh, you know, there are people in this business that know how to facilitate the licenses. I don't really do that, but uh, in terms of the, the zoning and the permitting and making sure he's not in harm's way. I, I will do everything on that part. Okay. So, And we're permitted how much of an extension? Uh, 180 days up to 360 total. Okay. So, but today we can give 180 days. Correct. Okay. So, Mr. Miller, um, based on what you told us, I'd be inclined to vote that we would grant you another 180 days. So that's six months. But, you know, so you and the cold weather's coming. I hope you'll be able uh, to uh, do some things. Uh, I realize. Okay. So I would vote to approve the hardship extension. I concur and vote to approve the hardship extension. I, too, vote uh, to approve the hardship extension for an additional 180 days, not to exceed 360. Yes. So good luck. Good luck. Thank you very Thank much. You. Yes. Thank you. Uh, so is that the morning docket, Mr. Ackerson? That concludes the morning matters. One. Page, you ready to go? Uh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon. Now begins the PM docket of the Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City. The board is now in session. If you're in possession of any type of electronic device, please place said device on the off or silent mode during proceedings. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner's preliminary matter on the PM docket, case number 32921 O'Donnell Street, El Buffalo. This matter has been postponed. Call the case of Whispers 1807-11 Baker Street. This is a Class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license here for violation of Article 6-313, small a, number 2, tampering with alcoholic beverage container on June the 28th, 2018. Please come forward. Uh, for the record, Melvin J. Kanensky, 19 East Fayette Street, representing the applicant. Good afternoon. Oh, I'm sorry. Would those who are going to testify raise their right hands, please? <coughs> Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Mr. Kadensky, your client's charged with this uh, violation on June 28th. They're going to admit or deny? No, I've talked with the Comptroller's Office, and there'll, there'll be an admission um, that we're cooperative and so forth. We just have a way of um, explanation as to the situation at the appropriate time. Okay. Um, this case here, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, the Kim, uh, Mrs. Kim and his, her husband and so forth, they were, and I talked with the um, controller's office, it was a situation where they were not refilling with, with things that were not that item and was the same item. And it used to be, I don't know, none of you're all, you're probably too young, but in the old days there people would buy halves or 175s at a cheaper rate by the case and then they would refill them for their bar, which is, it is tampering in a strict sense of the word. There's really no excuse for it. He understands now no matter what, and even if you have three bottles and each have little pieces, you want to you marry him up? No, you cannot do that. He understands that. He has not had any kind of history at all with regard to uh, tampering uh, before. I talked to the they were cooperative with the employee. 
Uh, Supervising Inspector Alan Southworth, the Comptroller, Maryland Field Enforcement Division. Alan is A L A L A N. Okay. Um, commissioners have questions? Can I have a question? I don't have any questions. Is there anything further, Mr. Kadensky? No, I'm, with the, I'm saying this is a uh, kind of event that's the first time for them. And then it's not wasn't like they weren't putting in, you know, um, 80 proof and 100 proof bottles, what you see sometimes. Okay. Um, Thank you. On the basis of the materials contained in the charging document, the uh, admission, the proffer from counsel and testimony received, I would find uh, that the licensee has committed a violation of alcoholic beverage article 6.313 small a uh, numeral 2 on June 28, 2018. Um, they've had this license according to our record since 2015 and this is their fourth time before the board. I would impose a thousand dollar fine and give them 30 days to pay it. Was there anyone else that wanted to testify? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, <laughs> I thought you were with him, sir. So come forward, please. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Marvin Cheatham. I'm the neighborhood president for Matthew Henson Neighborhood Association. Uh, we don't have any real opposition. It's a business that has been very much cooperative with the Neighborhood Association. Uh, we've had some issues, they've had some, but I think we've been able to work those issues out. However, I feel somewhat compelled I'll be here again next week as well with another case, a little more serious than this one. But we feel a real necessity to share uh, some brief information uh, with this board. Uh, and hopefully you'll just give me a couple minutes just to share some concerns. The mayor has designated our area as a violence reduction area. Uh, sadly enough, since January of this year, we've had 16 homicides just in our specific neighborhood. Uh, we think probably second to no community in Baltimore City to have received that many homicides uh, in just one, uh, one year period. Uh, we also have 11 liquor stores, uh, at least uh, establishments that have liquor. We actually have a poster, and I'll be very brief. This is the number of liquor stores that we have just in one neighborhood. Very small neighborhood, but it's just one neighborhood. We also have five schools in the area. What we're hoping to do each time we come here is to share our concern mm -hmm. with the owners of these liquor establishments. Some we have good relationship with, and we you know, know Mr. Kim and his family for a while. They've done relatively well. But if we don't at some point get to the point to reduce some of these liquor stores, we're, to con we're gonna continue having the problems we have. Uh, they do good business, but of course the patrons are the ones. The business isn't a problem. So we're gonna be asking each business to consider, as we've offered to this business, uh, a memorandum of understanding that we're hoping uh, the attorney and they will consider. And that is a memorandum of understanding with the community when they close their business, that they not transfer or sell the license, that they allow the business to go out of business to begin to reduce the number of liquor stores that we have. We're not, we're not Fells Point. Uh, we are like Greenmount Avenue. Uh, we just have far too many liquor stores and there's far too much violence and we need to begin reducing them. So we have a good relationship with them. We're gonna continue working with them. I normally see Mr. Kim uh, at least once a week. Uh, and he shared with me his concerns, we share with him ours, but we need to reduce liquor stores and it needs to start somewhere. And I'm hoping they will seriously consider our offer for a memorandum of understanding to allow some of these liquor stores to close and not transfer the license or sell the license to someone else. So I know this is probably all out of order, but we just feel we need to share these concerns. One neighborhood having 16 homicides since January should be unreasonable. It should not be acceptable. And we're not saying it's all liquor. We have a large open air drug market area, but we know this many liquor stores cannot help. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Um, so uh, I had found a violation. I imposed a thousand dollar fine. I gave him 30 days to pay. Commissioners? I to find a violation of section 6-313 small a 
to tampering with alcoholic beverage containers, and I concur with the $1,000 fine based on uh, the violation history on this license. I find a violation of alcohol beverage articles, section 6-313, small a2. Um, I will concur with the uh, imposition of a $1,000 fine. Thank you. Thank you. Board Exhibit 1, Control Incident Report. Board Exhibit 2, Uniform Criminal Citation. Thank you. Stock Market Bar, 3538 South Hanover Street. This is a Class BD7, Beer, Wine, and Liquor License. Here for violation of Rule 4.01A, Sales to Minor on July the 18th, 2018. Please come forward. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Uh, commissioners, uh, Sean Harvey, 309 South Conkling Street, Baltimore, 21224 for the um, uh, licensee who's standing next to me, Mr. Chaudhry. He's the uh, majority stockholder and full-time operator. Good afternoon. Would everyone raise their right hands, please? And do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Okay. Mr. Um, Harvey, your client's charged with a sale to minor on July 18th. Admission or denial? This will be an admission, Mr. Chairman. I want to be heard in uh, mitigation. Uh, Mr. Chaudhry has been operating this uh, business since 2004. Um, he was here before on a similar charge, but that was about five and a half years ago. Um, and his, uh, his employee, Sheila Best, uh, is 64 years old. In fact, she's downstairs. She didn't feel like she had to bring uh, ID in order to come in uh, in the uh, uh, city hall, so she, they wouldn't let her in. But um, since this happened in July, um, Mr. Chaudhry has sent her to uh, John Murray uh, to um, be certified in alcohol awareness training. And... Um, I also want the board to uh, note in your um, records that uh, this was a task force uh, attempted uh, to do the same thing back in uh, February, and uh, the, the uh, cadet was carded, and he even received a, a letter of accommodation. Uh, that was sent in March 1st. So if you take all these things into consideration, uh, we just so submit. Best the only employee? Uh, no, there, he has two employees. Plus the the uh, <coughs> other licensee who's a minority licensee. But are those, those who handle alcohol are they all certified now? Yes. Okay. Um, as you understand, so it's your third one since 2008. I know that's 10 years, but um, you know. Well, it's been five and a half years since the last I, one. I appreciate that. Uh, commissioners have questions? I don't have any questions. I do not. Anything further? Nothing further. Are they cooperative with you? Cooperative. Okay, thank you. Uh, on the basis then of the materials contained in the charging documents, uh, the admission by counsel, testimony received, uh, and taking into account the history of violations, uh, I would find a violation, first of all, of Rule 4.01, small a, sale to minor on July 18, 2018, and then taking into account their history, I'd impose a $1,000 fine and I'd give them 30 days to pay. I also find a violation of rule 4.01 small a sales to minors on July 18 2018 and I concur with a thousand dollar fine based on their history as well I find a violation of rule 4.01 small a and would concur with the imposition of a thousand dollar fine thank you thank you thank you Ms. Harvey I call zip for the record you're welcome Board Exhibit 1, Baltimore City Police Department Report, Detective Greenhill. Board Exhibit 2, Investigation Report, Agent Chris Malice. <coughs> Club Luzerne, 542 North Luzerne Avenue. This is a Class BD7, Beer, Wine, and Liquor License. Here for violation of Rule 4.01A, Sales to Minors on September the 6th, 2018. Please come forward. Uh, for the record, Melba J. Kanetsko representing the licensee. Good afternoon. Would everyone who's going to testify raise his or her right hand? <coughs> Green Hill, too. Has he already been sworn? Yes, he did. Raise your right hand. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Uh, so this is a sale to minor or, um, charge from September 6th. Is it an admission or a denial? It would be an admission. Okay. Yeah. In, in way of mitigation, 
um, the business is basically run by Mr. Mahari and his brother uh, comes in there part time. They were very crowded that day. His brother made a mistake, did not check. Uh, I told him from now on, I don't care. Even if I come in there, you check me. Because if they would have asked him if he had a card, he would have left. And uh, it's another kind of place that's been here before you for serving minors. I think the last time they had a violation with the minors was uh, in about 12 years ago in uh, 06. But since that time, he has gotten together with all his employees, tell them to check everybody, no matter what. He can check his brother if he comes in there. Were they cooperative? Would the commissioners have questions for them? No questions. Okay, thank you. On the basis then of the materials contained in the charging papers, the admission by counsel, the testimony received, I would find a violation of Rule 4.01 small a on September 6, 2018. Um, this license has been with him since 2014. Um, if, am I correct about that? Or 2001? Which is. Um, I think it says it was transferred January 28, 2014. Yes. Okay. So um, this that would make this your second appearance before well, us. Well, if, if there was a, um, right, but the, the, for minors, the first. Yes. Okay. You okay. had an open and operating violation. Okay. Um, so I would, uh, uh, I'd impose a, $750 fine, give him 30 days to pay. Uh, I concur and find the violation of Rule 4.01A, small a, sales to minors on September 6, 2018, and I concur with the $750 fine. If you find a violation of Rule 4.01, small a, and would concur with the imposition of a $750 fine. Thank you. I close up for the record. Board Exhibit 1, Former City Police Department Report, Detective Greenhill. Board Exhibit 2, Investigation Report, Agent Chris Amalis. Club 2300, 2300 West Baltimore Street. This is a Class BD7, Beer One and Liquor License. Here for violation of Rule 4.01A, Sales to Minors on September the 6th, 2018. Please come forward. For the record, Melvin Jenkins representing uh, the lic current licensees. Good afternoon. Would all those who are going to testify raise their right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? This would be an admission by way of explanation after. That's fine. Um, and this place here, this place is in the matter of transition. Actually, the li current licensees here, the licensee that was approved. What do you want to do? You want to swear him in or what? I'm sorry, what's going on? Him? I don't know. So that, that wasn't sworn in. I don't know that we need him if we make an admission, but I mean, yeah, uh, I you're don't more know comfortable with okay. The new licensee is here. They're in a transition of having it transfer, but it hasn't. So there have been multiple parties that have been in there haven't fully set in. And um, quite frankly, too many people were working there and they slipped up on it. And I've explained to the incoming licensee that he cannot, when he gets in there, can go in there and make sure that. Uh, everybody gets checked no, ma no matter what. So the gentleman to your right is the current licensee? Here. Oh, he is. Yeah. And the gentleman coming there is coming is, in. Is, and that has not been heard before us yet? Yes, it has. It's been approved. Oh. We're going through the, apparently the health department f has some issue with a zoning or something. I, I can't figure out what it is. Zoning has no issue, but the health department has an issue. Okay. Um, cooperation. Commissioners? No questions. Okay, thank you. On the basis then of the materials contained in the charging papers, the admission by counsel, and any testimony received, we find a violation of Rule 4.01 small a on September 6, 2018. Um, so the prior, the licensee who's moving out of this operation has, uh, this would be his fifth time here. Um, so I'd impose a $1,000 fine, give him 30 days to pay it. I, too, find a violation of Rule 4.01, small a, sales to minors on September 6, 2018, and I concur with a $1,000 fine. I find a violation of Rule 4.01, small a, and would concur with the imposition of a $1,000 fine. Thank you. I'd call exhibits for the record. Board Exhibit 1, 
Baltimore well, State Police Department report, Detective LeBron. Tomorrow. What is the material investigation report, Agent Kissel Malice? Chano, Ethiopia, 34 South Utah Street. This is a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license here for violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors on September the 6th, 2018. Please come forward. And good afternoon, Your Honor. Uh, Roland Harris on behalf of Jano and uh, Mr. Work, who is present to my right. Good afternoon. Would everyone who's going to testify raise his or her right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, <coughs> the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Mr. Harris, is your client's charged with a sale to minor on September 6th. Is this an admission or a denial? This would be an admission. Okay. And do you want to explain or give mitigating? Y yes, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Warku has actually been operating for about four years at this point in time. He's been here in the United States for about 20 years. Um, his mother is about 70, uh, in her mid-70s, still living in Ethiopia. He took a trip. He was out of town. He left at the beginning of September and didn't return until the end of September. In the meantime, the business was left to the his employees and his wife. Unfortunately, the bouncer that was working that day was a Mr. Madden. Um, he didn't follow the policies that are in place in terms of the Jano Lounge. And unfortunately, we had the situation that um, brought us before the court today. Um, in the meantime, Mr. Warku has taken certain steps. He's tried to up the policies at the, uh, um, at the lounge, now requiring an ID check both at the door and also at the bar. Um, in addition, he's doing a, uh, um, a wristband system where people coming into the bar that are over the age of 21 would then wear a, a wristband while they're inside the establishment as well. So he takes the, um, the violation very seriously, and he's taken proactive steps to try to address it. Cooperative? Commissioners? No questions. OK, thank you. On the basis of the materials contained in the charging documents, the admission by counsel, and any testimony received, I find a violation of Rule 4.01, small a, on September 6, 2018. This um, licensee has had the license since 2015. This is third appearance before the commission. I'd impose a thousand dollar fine and give him thirty days to pay. Thank you. I too find a violation of Rule four point zero one small a sales to minors on September sixth, two thousand eighteen. And I concur with the thousand dollar fine. I too find a violation of Rule four point zero one small a and would uh, concur with the imposition of a thousand dollar fine. Thank you. I call Zippers for the record. Board of Zippers 1, Baltimore State Police Department report, Detective LeBron. Board of Zippers 2, Investigation Report, Agent Chris Malice. Mystic Tavern, 2949 Frederick Avenue. <coughs> this is a Class BD7, beer, wine, and liquor license. Here for violation of Rule 4.05A, prohibited hours on October the 5th, 2018. Violation of Rule 4.05B, prohibited hours on October the 5th, 2018. Please come forward. Would those here on this case raise their right hands, please? I swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Are you Ms. Williams Koch? Yes. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yes. Kosh? <laughs> okay. Thank you. So um, you're charged with two violations for uh, being open after hours, one under Rule 4.05 small a and one under Rule 4.05 small b on October 5, 2018. Do you wish to admit or deny the violations? Admit. Okay. Do you want to tell us what happened? I just lost track of time. Your name, sir? Martin Kosh. Yes. Are you her husband? Yes. And you work at this place as well? Yes, I have a husband. Okay. So we're talking. You were supposed to close at two, two and you were found having patrons there at two ten. Is that correct? True. Um, were they cooperative with they you? Were. They were. Um, do you have anything else you want to add, uh, commissioners? No questions. So, uh, just Mr. Kosh, you're. I guess you're the Marvin Elwood that's in our document. Yes. Okay. All right. No questions. 
Um, okay, on the basis then of the um, uh, testimony that's been received and the matters uh, contained in the charging documents, I find a violation of Rule 4.05 small a and 4.05 small b, uh, each on October 5, 2018. Um, the Ms. Koch has had this uh, license since 2013. It's the first time she's appeared before the board. I would impose a $300 fine as to each of the violations for a total of $600, and I'd give her 30 days to pay. I, too, find a violation of Rule 4.05A on October 5, 2018, and I concur with a $300 fine as to that violation. And I, can, I uh, too, find a violation of Rule 4.05 small b on October 5, 2018, and I concur with a $300 fine, 30 days to pay. I find a violation of Rule 4.05 small a and agree with the imposition of a $300 fine. I also find a violation of Rule 4.05, small b, and concur with the imposition of a $300 fine. So just be careful, okay? okay. Thank you. Thank you. Night positives for the bracket. Board of Civil One, Baltimore City Police Department report, Detective LeBron. Board of Civil Two, investigation report, Agent for Samalis. And this next one. Yeah. Oxygen Lounge. 10 South Calvert Street. This is a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license. Here for violation of Rule 4.20, small b, small i, prohibited activities by license type on October the 2nd, 2018. Violation of Rule 4.20, small b, small i, small i, prohibited activities by license type on October the 2nd, 2018. Please come forward. For the record, Melvin J. Cadency, uh, 320 North Charles Street, representing the licensee. Uh, which licensee is with you? Mr. Nawazi. Okay. Uh, would you all, gentlemen, please raise your right hands. Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. Um, missions or denials, Mr. Well, Cadency? And it's sort of like a hybrid at this point. Uh, to make it a little bit into what your appetite a little bit. Um, as I read the 420, I think it's only one violation. Uh, and here, I, I did. Uh, I know you would be looking, and I thought I'd get it for you. Thank you. I got, I got three of them here. Do you want one, Deb? I just gave one to you. Here, I'll give you another one. Is it in Italian? I, I have one. Yeah. Thank you. Grazie. Thanks. Um, if you read it, uh, we're not contesting that there wasn't food and the kitchen wasn't open on that night. The question is when you read it through B, uh, small i, two, they're all in the conjunctive, one after the other, and, and. I think it's only one violation as you go through. It's not two separate violations. Because if your kitchen isn't open, then the other ones would be automatically included uh, in that thing. There are two separate violations from reading the statement of facts. I uh, think that there's no doubt that when they came, there was not, they weren't in the, have a functioning kitchen on that night. The and wasn't in there. I wouldn't have the problem, but for somebody to put the and in there. Well, if the statute read that um, it would be a violation of this rule if you did small i and small 2, I'd agree with you. But, but if it, it doesn't read that way, it says that they shall have on premises A and B and C. Yeah, but I mean, it, usually they would, if you eliminated, we have the word or in there. So you would have three separate violations. That would be in a disjunctive. That, that's my argument. Okay. And so I think it would be a merger, but. Um, so other than that, you agree that it occurred? Yeah. Okay. Um, were they cooperative with you? He was. Uh, commissioners? I don't have any questions. No questions. Okay. Uh, on the basis of the uh, materials contained in the charging documents and the uh, proffer by counsel, taking into consideration his legal argument as to the statute, uh, I would disagree with Mr. Kadensky. I think that uh, the facts here do give rise to uh, two violations under the statute. Um, so I would find a violation of 4.20 small b small i on October 2, 2018, as well as a violation of rule 4.20 small b small double i on October 2, 2018. 
Um, this is the second time that the uh, licensee's been before the board since he took the license. Um, I'd impose a thousand dollar fine, give him 30 days to pay. As to each? Oh, I'm sorry, I'd make it 500 each. You were right, Commissioner. I too find, I uh, concur with the chair. I too find a violation of rule 4.20, small b, small i, on October 2nd, 2018, and I concur with the $500 fine as to that violation. And I find a violation of rule 4.20, small b, small two i's, uh, on October 2nd, 2018, and I find, I concur with a $500 fine. I too find a violation of rule 4.20, small b, small i, and concur with the imposition of a $500 fine. Find a violation of rule 4.20, small b, two small i's, and uh, concur with the imposition of a $500 fine. Do you want this in the record? Uh, that's your rules. Oh, it will be received. Mm -hmm. Okay. I close the the record. Board Exhibit 1, Investigation Report, Agent for Somalis. Licensee Exhibit 1, um, Rule 4.20, Prohibited Activities by License Type. Thank you. Is that our docket, Mr. Page? That's correct, Mr. Chairman. The board is in recess until Thursday, November 8th, 2018, 11 a.m. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. We're adjourned. I saw you guys this morning. It must have been torture. <laughs> I know I want to say something, but I'm not sure I want to say. But I, it, I'm going to it, say we're on it. the record. <laughs> well, it's on the record from this morning. <laughs> okay. I'm getting too old for that. Still. You're too old. How about me? Larry, I like your shirt. <laughs> He has badges prominently displayed. I know. <laughs> it's issuing violations now. That's the only problem. I mean, I gave him a ticket book. Take it out of the